Brian, uh, coming off another win, three games in a row for this team. Uh, got a tough opponent with Louisiana this week, but how are how are the feelings in the locker room? How, how is it uh, around this team, especially compared to last year? You're one of the few guys who came back over. Yeah, yeah, we we feel good. You know, um, it's it is a it's a big difference from last year, but you know that's that's what we expected. We knew, we had a winning coaching staff come in. We brought in a lot of new guys, and you know we're doing exactly what we expected to do. I mean, this is a standard. You started that game with an interception, kind of an athletic play too, a real, real good pick. Uh, how'd that feel? Walk us through that play. Oh, it felt awesome. Uh, you know, they they threw that little uh, that out route, and then uh, Josh Eaton lit him up, and you know, I, I I did the incomplete sign at first, and then I was like, oh dang, I can I can get this ball. So dove out, pulled it to my chest, rolled on my back. And yeah, we got it. Just like a DB, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, just like it. Just like Ed Reed. You know, they, they started to come back a little bit in the second half after you all built up that lead. You're able to hold them off towards the end of that fourth quarter. But what's going through your mind, the defensive side of the ball, when, when they're starting to come back a little bit and, and there's plays going wrong, like the Mahdi, uh, uh, the fumble right there? And uh, what, what's going through y'all's mind in that situation? Uh, man, we, we tried to rally and just, just take it one play at a time. That's our, that's our mentality, just just – Stay calm and, like TJ Finley said, just have poise in the moment. Uh, take it one play at a time. Can control what you can control, and that's really all you can do. You know, we know we know what we're capable of. We know that we have a, a good group of guys. You know, a, a a a good unit. You know, and so whenever when things get bad, you know, the guys on the on the team that need to step up, step up. Um, you know, that's that's D one football. That's how it goes. You know, it goes back and forth. So. Uh, I played enough football to know you just gotta take it one play at a time and uh, keep your head high. You know, don't don't ever start thinking that oh, we're about to lose. No, just just one play at a time. Don't look at the scoreboard. That'll take care of itself. You know, Louisiana's got a high powered offense over there. Just looking at the game field, what do you overall thoughts about how to stop this uh, high powered offense? Yeah, they they have a good unit. Um, you know, we we have to starts up front in the front seven. You know, we have to stop the run. Uh, we gotta keep that quarterback from scrambling you know we got to be able to tackle at a high level uh we got to hold hold down the receivers you know they have a, a pretty solid group across the board so um but at the end of the day it just it matters what we do we have to we have to take care of what we can take care of control what we can control uh and it should take care of itself you know mobile quarterbacks kind of add an extra dimension for the defense to handle just because you know they're almost like an extra defender you have to prepare for just what are the i guess the problems of like uh Preparing for someone as a mo as for a mobile quarterback that can you know if they make one move they they can break up maybe like a 15 yard run. Yeah, well the good thing is we have a couple uh, mobile quarterbacks already. So you know we have Malik Hornsby who we're we're pretty used to playing against him. He's that dude's electric. You know PJ Hatter, also electric. You know we're we're used to. You know, PJ, he's a he's a scout team quarterback, so you know we're we're already used to covering a fast guy and, and containing him. So um, I'd say that's a that's a plus on our end. And you know we're we're not you know we we're worried about it. And we're gonna we're gonna treat him with respect. You know as we should. But um, at the end of the day, he's just another guy. You know, I, I don't think we got to talk to you after you won Defensive Player of the Week. How how did that feel to get that after the twelve tackle performance, uh, two fumble recoveries, two tackles for a loss? Uh, how, how nice was that to get that accolade? Uh, it was a good feeling, you know. It was, it was an honor for sure. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I feel like I, I attribute that to, to my teammates around me, you know, because I, I, I trust them and they trust me, and I don't have to do too much. You know, I just make the plays that come to me, and uh, it could have, it could have been anybody on our defense, really. You know, anybody, uh, Dan Foster, you know, uh, Caleb Ford, Demand, you know, all, all those guys. They, they do their jobs too, at a high level. Um, I think. I think anybody could get it at this point. You know, we have a, we have a good group of guys on our defense. You know, going on the road, first conference road game last week. Got another conference road game this week. What did, what did you take away from from the, the the travel and everything that's involved going to road game? What did you take away from that that you think you guys can uh, uh, use do differently to benefit you this week? Um, man, we I feel like we handled it pretty good. You know, it's uh, it was our our first game playing on the road out of Texas, so uh, we handled it good. I, f I felt like everybody was in a good headspace. You know, the coaches take care of us. Um, we're, we're real comfortable with the hotels, you know, so um, I think we just need to handle it a lot like we did last week, you know, just, just lock in and, you know, it's just another game. It doesn't really matter where it is. Like TJ said, in Canada, backyard, doesn't matter. Any, we're, we can play you anywhere. You know, for one start, best start since 2005, you know, being on that team last year, how good does it feel like this, you know, with this team, y'all have seen me like turn, turn, turn this program around? Right, yeah, it's a, it's a good feeling, you know, it's, it's my last year of eligibility, so that's definitely something that we wanted to do. You know, we wanted to win. Um, 
you know, I stuck with it. I stayed here and I trusted the coaches, trusted the new coaching staff. And I think they've definitely showed us, you know, they, they, they were true to their word to, that we're here to win. And that's the ultimate goal. You know, that's what everybody on this team wants to do. Everybody, everybody here are some winners and they have the winning mindset. So I think that's going to take us a long ways. Always forget to ask you about Coach Greg because he uh, he coached you at Kilgore, right? I'm pretty yes, sure I have that right. So you guys, that relationship goes back way back then. He didn't even have to recruit you; we were already here. But what was that? What was that like? Him showing up and kind of rekindling that that old coaching player relationship. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, he, you know, when he was about to he was about to come over here, he he told me, you know, and I was like, man, that's uh, that was a good thing for me. You know, me and Coach Greg, we we stayed in touch for the last five years. You know, since I was at Kilgore. Uh, he's a great guy. He's a great coach. You know, I was super excited to to have him on our defensive staff. You know, and just he's a he's a he's a leader. You know, in the coaching staff. So, um, yeah, it was it was it was awesome knowing that he was that we were going to be back together again. Because he was he was your linebacker coach at Kilgore, even though he's corners here now. He's linebacker then, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Me and Coach Greg are real tight. You know, he's a he's a great coach. You know, real happy to have him here.